What does practice make? It makes perfect. <laughs> no, practice makes permanent. You would suck at Jeopardy. I bet you can't even spell Jeopardy. J E Shut up. Hey, it's Justin here to share a few insights, ideas, tips, experiences, musings, anything I can find or do to help us be better people in a world going insane. And of course, your insights are always welcome as well in the comments. As you can tell, I'm not in my studio. I'm actually on the road speaking and holding workshops. Truck. One of the things I speak about quite a bit is self-esteem. And no, I don't mean the everybody gets a trophy self-esteem. I am an attractive person. I am fun to be with. In my office, I keep a Little League baseball participation trophy I got when I was eight years old. I keep it as a reminder to myself to always be worthy of the rewards that I receive. When I was eight years old, we thought it might be a good idea to try some baseball. That didn't work out so well. I was stuck in the outfield, didn't know what the heck I was doing. The only way I got on base was if I walked and I almost always struck out. But at the end of the year pizza party, we all gathered around, we had fun, we had pizza, and then trophies were handed out. My dad happened to be the coach. When it was my turn to get up, he said, and now Justin, a real slugger, and handed me my trophy. I cannot tell you how humiliated and embarrassed I was because I knew I never hit a ball. Everybody else knew I hadn't hit a ball. And here I was getting the exact same trophy and award and acknowledgement than the best guy on our team who actually Hit balls. That didn't come out right. Hit baseballs. That's better. That did the opposite of boosting my self-esteem. You see, building self-esteem is all about proving to yourself that you're capable of accomplishing something. So here are my four steps to improving self-esteem. Step one, set your goal. Or as I like to say, choose your story. Once we understand that we are the authors of our own life and that each day and each tomorrow is its own separate blank page, then it makes it easier for you to decide what you want to write. It is so deep. No, it isn't. Make a list of your weaknesses. For example, I have problems following through with things. But you're perfect. Mmm, I know, but I didn't used to be. Eight years ago, I decided to attack that weakness head on. So I decided to pick something that I'd never done before, something that I would never even think about doing, something that was very difficult for me to do. How many of you have run a marathon? I haven't, and I would never run a marathon. It's like 100 miles. Smart. But then I saw, ooh, there's an 8K. That's about five-ish miles. Eh, I can do that. You gotta understand, I am the least athletic person I know. Thinking about exercise makes me want to take a nap. So tired. So, so tired. So to try to get up and train and prepare to run five miles was not an easy task. But it was during a time of my life where I needed to prove to myself that I could actually start something and finish it. Thus improving my self-confidence, my self-esteem. So. I decided to run an 8K. Step two, make a plan and stick to it. Plan? So I decided to train by running as far as I could each day, every day without fail. My first day, I could barely get around the block. And as I ran each day, each day I got better. I could run further and further, or was it farther? I could run longer until I was running five miles without any problem at all. But here's why I learned why you have to stick to it. A week before the race, I flew out to Idaho to visit my sister. I promised myself that I would stick to it and I'd train out in the mountains. Yeah, right. Ran the first day, it was great, stuck to it. Second day, didn't run. Third day, didn't run. I didn't run for the rest of the time there. When I got back home, I realized I had a race in a few days. So I got out to run, it was a struggle but I wasn't gonna quit. I had paid my money, I got my little number, and I was gonna do it. Somebody stop me! Step three, don't compare yourself to others and pace yourself. When selecting a challenge to overcome your weakness, you can't compare yourself to others who might be doing the same challenge. You should always compare yourself to you and how you were before. Just tell me I'm prettier than when we graduated. When it was our cue's turn to start running, I was doing pretty good. I was maintaining the pace that I wanted to maintain, and I was feeling like, yeah, yeah, okay, we can do this. But then I noticed a guy in a wheelchair starting to catch up with me, and I was like, uh, <laughs> no. I wasn't gonna be beaten out by a guy in a wheelchair. I prefer handicapped, actually. So prideful of me, decided to pick up the pace a little bit. But then a grandma in a white tank top and pink short shorts passed me like this. This grandma was speed walking faster than I was running. Um, no. I wasn't gonna let some speed walking grandma beat me. So I started running faster. See you at the finish line, Granny. About halfway through the race, I hit the wall. 
my legs felt like columns of cement. It took all the effort in the world just to pick my feet up to continue running. Then a sharp pain like an ice pick being jabbed into my right knee just shot all the way down to my ankle and all the way up my side. Ah! I was tired. I was exhausted. This is hard! And my mind flooded with thoughts. One of the thoughts was just, just give up, just stop, just stop and just go to the car. The other thought was, no, just walk a little bit and uh, you'll be able to start running again after you rest while you walk. I knew that if I started walking, I was not gonna be able to run again. And the third choice that popped up in my head was keep moving forward. So step four, keep moving forward. So I decided to push through it. I had made up my mind to run an 8K and finish the race. I was not going to give up. Eventually, the finish line came into view. I was so excited, even though it was really far away. And guess who passed me on my way to the finish? See at the finish line, Granny. I got my participation medal, and that one I knew I had earned. I got more than just a participation medal. I got the boost in self-confidence that I really needed, especially at that time. I needed to know that I could actually accomplish something difficult for me. I needed to know that I could actually start something and finish it. You are amazing. I didn't do it just to have a, a great story to tell. I didn't do it because I thought it would uh, turn my life around 180 degrees. Because lives don't usually change like that. They just change a degree at a time. And as long as you keep investing in yourself to have experiences like that, then your self-esteem will improve. Your self-confidence will improve. The only way you can improve your self-esteem is by picking yourself up, getting yourself out there, and proving to yourself that you can do something hard. It doesn't matter if other people find it easy. All that matters is that you are able to overcome something that you find difficult. And once you discover the power within you to do that, game changer. So write down a list of weaknesses you want to overcome. Write down some goals or some ideas that you would find challenging. Not too crazy challenging, but not too easy either. And pick one and follow these four steps. And you'll find that little by little, investing in yourself in this way, when you look back at yourself a year from now, you won't even recognize you. I'd love to hear your ideas, your experiences, your thoughts, and if there's anything else you would add to this list, just put it in the comments below.